Welcome back. Have you been thinking about what the reason that our tunnel is not working? I will tell you now. The problem is in the configuration of this Cisco SA firewall, the local peer, that is the responder in this case. And the reason that the tunnel is not working has not to do with this configuration. These configuration lines are 100% correct. So that's not the issue. However, the issue is because of tada, NAT, Network Address Translation. Let me show you the current NAT configuration in the firewall. We have a NAT statement that NATs outbound traffic from inside to outside and hides the source address behind the outside interface. This also applies to the echo replies. So we are getting echoes inbound in the tunnel and we're receiving echo replies from the server coming into the firewall and they are being natted. So the echo reply that comes from 10.0.0.100, let's have a look at the topology. The echo reply that comes from 10.0.0.100 with a destination of 10.0.1.123 in the Cisco ASA host, that echo reply packet is natted and the source address 10.0.0.100 is being replaced by the outside IP 10.192.168.200. That means that when the traffic, when the echo reply hits the outside interface, it will not match the interesting traffic proxy access list. So the echo reply are being sent out on internet to the default gateway of the Cisco ASA and not being sent into the tunnel because of NAT. And we have actually done modifications of the NAT configuration earlier when we worked with AnyConnect to solve this kind of issues. And we will do the same here. We need to do a NAT exemption. It needs to be a twice NAT. So if we look at this NAT line here, this one overrides traffic from inside to outside if the source is the inside network and the destination is VPN clients. So this line exists to make an exemption from these two lines here. And what we need to do is create one more NAT exemption. So let's do that. We need to create an object for both networks, both the local networks and the remote networks. And the local network already exists. It's called inside net, and we can reuse that one but we need to create an object for the remote network. So we do that, object, network, remote net, and the definition of that is subnet 10.0.1.0. And we will not do a NAT in this position in object configuration mode, because then it would be an object NAT. So we do exit once to get into global configuration mode, and then we create a more or less a copy of this line. We do a NAT from inside to outside, source, static, inside net, inside net, and destination, static, remote net, remote net, like that. So that means that traffic from inside to outside, if the source is inside net, the source should be inside net, but only if their destination is remote net and then the destination should be netted to remote net, which is the same IP addresses. So this line will hopefully make our ping working. And whenever we do changes in the NAT configuration, we use the command clear xlate to clear the current NAT table in the memory of the firewall so that it will apply the new configuration. And after doing that, we we'll jump over to the Windows machine and it still does not work. That's interesting. Oh, I'm pinging the wrong IP. 10.0.0.100, like that. That's better. Okay, so now we can see that the ping is working. And just to make sure that this was actually the problem because we pinged the wrong IP address before, we will go back and we will remove this one, this line, once more. So we do a no and this line and clear X late so that you will see that if we remove this line, the ping will break. And once more, if we add the line again, the ping will work again. So now we have a 
fully working VPN tunnel and everything is good. Let's have a look at the show commands. Show crypto Isaacamp SA shows MM active in the other one. Show crypto Isaacamp SA. We have an MM active. This one is the initiator. This one is the responder. Show crypto IPsec SA shows us that we have packets in both directions. And these are the number of packets since the SA was built. And since we have a problem earlier, they are not the same number. But next time the tunnel will go down, they will be reset to zero. And there will hopefully be the same number on both lines here. And we have the same numbers of packets encapsulated, encrypted, and digested. And we have packets in both directions. Show crypto IPsec in the other firewall. SA shows us packets in both directions as well. So we have a fully working VPN tunnel and all traffic between the subnets 10.0.0.0 and 10.0.1.0 are being sent into the tunnel. We have access lists applied for filtering traffic. We have inside access lists inbound on our inside interfaces on the Cisco ASA that filters traffic but that allows all ICMP traffic. Traffic on the outside interface is not applied to VPN traffic because of the checkbox that exempt all VPN traffic from access list. The same checkbox that we used for any connect in earlier lectures. And that means that we are not filtering traffic inbound. Only traffic that goes out from our local network are being filtered in the access list. And on the remote ASA, there is no inside access list blocking traffic. And on the local ASA, the Cisco ASA to the bottom in the drawing, there is an access list, but that is allowing all ICMP traffic. So the traffic is flowing. To conclude this, this is how you configure a VPN tunnel. And if we want to create another VPN tunnel, let's see what we need to replicate. Let's say that our Cisco ASA should have a second tunnel to another remote ASA. Let's say that this is a firewall that has a tunnel to 100, and we should create a tunnel to 102, but using the same parameters. Then we can reuse this one and do not need to add these lines again because the phase one policy is global and always sent to all peers. Also, if we use the same phase two parameters, we can reuse the my transform set transform set. We need to create a new tunnel group. So let's say that we create another tunnel group to make a tunnel to dot two or two, and maybe the same key or some other key. We need to create a new access list with another name because otherwise it will be the same access list. VPN traffic two or two and say that it is from our local network 10.0.1 to 10.0.2, for example. Then we need to create a new set of these lines. We can only apply one crypto map to an interface, and it's a common mistake to try to create a new crypto map. And you can create as many crypto maps as you want, but you cannot apply more than one on the outside interface. That means that if you apply another crypto map to the outside interface, the first one is being removed. So what you want to do, if you want to have another tunnel on the outside, which is what you probably want, is that you create a new set of these lines with another sequence number. So this is another tunnel, and you change the access list to a two, you change the peer to dot two or two, and you use the same transform set. So if you see, a configuration like this in a firewall, where we have three lines with one number and three lines with another number, that means that this firewall has two different VPN tunnels configured. This one is one tunnel where the number is the same, the sequence number, and this one is another VPN tunnel. They're both in the same crypto map because you can only have one crypto map on the outside interface. You don't have to repeat this one because when you enable phase one ISACAMP protocol on the outside, you only do it once in each firewall. So by just creating these lines again, this line again, and this line again, you have created a second tunnel. However, 
if you want to have other settings, you need to create a new ISACAM policy like we did in the beginning. And that needs to have another number here, or maybe it has another encryption method. And let's say it has MD5 here, like that. So this is for the second tunnel. However, since these are both global, that means that for both tunnels configured, the firewall will always send both policies. The policies are not tied to tunnels. Also, if you want to create another transform set, another set of parameters, you need to create a new transform set with another name. And actually, it's a good idea to change that name to something that replicates the usage. So let's say AES192 SHA. So this is the name of the transform set. So let's say we want to do 256 instead, and we want to do MD5 here. MD5 and 256. So this is the name, AS256 MD5, and this is the encryption, and this is the hash method. And you change this one here to that name. So whenever you have to set up another VPN tunnel where there already is at least one, it's much easier because you can copy paste parts of the configuration and part of the configuration you do not have to copy at all. So this concludes the chapter about how to set up Cisco firewalls with LAN to LAN tunnels with IPsec.